Hello, this is Ishia Lin and Dean Taylor with Metallograph Printed Electronics. This is our first video in our video and webinar series. This is an introduction to thermal transfer for printing flexible electronics. Uh, today, our webinar will be presented by Dean Taylor. Enjoy. Metallograph Thermal Transfer for Printed Electronics is a product of EMAC of Amherst, New York. It consists of ribbons for thermal transfer that are made with pure continuous aluminum as a conductor and resins for insulating or dielectrics. We also have some rather special films that we can help for insulators as well. Thermal transfer is widely used for labels and for identification in shipping and manufacturing. Because of the applications, they print on a wide range of films and papers. For Metallograph, we just suggest you use the highest quality. The technology is based on durable label constructions because that is Emacs business. And consequently, the Metallograph ribbons are durable because that has been designed in. Now thermal transfer is a solid state process. The ink on the ribbon is manufactured in a factory and where it, the thickness can be well controlled. So for you, the user, the, is, there are no fluids and so there's no drying and no sintering. That makes Metallograph easy, fast, economical, and functional for conductive and other electronic printing. The printing system for Metallograph is a Zebra ZT610 printer. We recommend the industrial style of benchtop printer and we have metallograph ribbon. So on the right here, we have the printer operating at the top of the image. Here is our ribbon. Um, here is where the paper has come out with the image on it. So now we've got the negative of the print. So we are showing here three of the four components of the print system. The Windows print driver, of course, is what is embedded in the computer and runs the printer. Here is a side view of that same printer. Um, obviously, here's the device itself, which is all of these. But the key point is in here. Um, which, will, which is where the printhead is. However, all of these other parts that you see are necessary. We have a roll of substrate. This is, um, in this instance, it's a four inch wide material. It comes down and is pulled through the machine by a drive roll, which is located here. And then it, it, it comes out. In our instance, we are winding it up on another core. So this is where print product will accumulate. The ribbon, or the ink, is at this position here, and so it unwinds and comes down through here, meets up with the substrate, and they go together under the printhead. And then uh, the used ribbon has to go somewhere, so it's taken out and wound up here. So now we have the various components, the printer, ribbon, the substrate, and the transfer location. The print head is what actually forms the image. Thermal transfer printing is a pixel based technology and that's how inkjet works as well. It uses a print head which has a row of resistors that can get hot and um, you, we will show you how that relates to a trans the transfer of the ink and the image. So this is an enlargement here of the nibs in the printhead. And so the resistive piece that heats up is here and they are energized by a voltage, a wave applied through here. 
so and grounding out here so this is here gets hot where you want to print now it is a binary image these are for um, thermal transfer it either prints or it doesn't print and so the images are rather similar to dot matrix and now we'll look again a closer look at the thermal transfer printing process we just looked at on the actual printer this is a little close-up diagram Dean's gonna walk us through this again our substrate comes through here um, comes around the drive roll and down it's a similar path that goes in the opposite direction after the printhead so our printed product is coming out here as we saw now the drive roll is what makes um, moves all the material so this here is the basically the engine for the movement the print head is here and um, the, these are the nibs so the there is pressure from the print head um, on the back of the ribbon to ensure that we have some friction there for the drive roll to function and pull the materials through now thermal transfer printing is based on simple physical chemistry and the key elements for physical chemistry are time temperature and pressure the time is going to be how long is the material under the print head the and that is dictated by the speed which is from the the pressure is from the head coming down and then the temperature is dictated by the um, the energy pulse that is sent to the nib. Now let's talk specifically about the ribbon. Now we're going to see a cross section of the actual metallograph thermal transfer ribbon. The ribbon is based on a polyester film that is six microns thick so that is it here now one side is against the nibs those nibs get very hot and they are much hotter than the melting point of the polyester so that's necessary to have a heat resistant back coat between the polyester and the nib and that's what this is here this also makes sure we have the right amount of friction between the head and the ribbon and it helps keep the head clean so there's actually a lot of technology embodied in this particular back coat on the other side this is where we have the ink and in this case the key element is the conductive layer of pure aluminum now that's about 250 nanometers thick a quarter micron so it's on the other side it is separated from the polyester carrier by a release layer we have to be able to take the layer off the carrier and so it's done with a coating it's not like other systems where it's a, a surface the other component is a heat sensitive or thermoplastic adhesive this get when it gets hot softens and it will stick to the substrate so that's about two microns thick the release coats about one and the metal is about a quarter so this this whole layer is only a, a few microns thick now let's put the ribbon and the substrate together under a nib and here again so we've got the print head with nib here back coat carrier film release layer metal adhesive and the substrate you'll notice that now we have these well in contact the motion is from right to left of the substrate with the print head fixed so now let us energize the nib we get that hot and uh, the heat from that is going to pass through the ribbon the coatings and into the adhesive here 
and the top of the substrate. So now the adhesive is soft, the substrate is warm, and with the pressure exerted from the print head, these will bond. Additionally, the release coating also gets hot and it becomes more frangible, so it can be um, separated more readily. So now we um, again we're moving the substrate from right to left in that direction there and as it moves forward we now will have an area where the bonding has will have occurred because this is the distance that the papers moved um, to get a pixel. So now just to recap if we look at the structure again our ribbon here the substrate with the print on it and the negative on the image which is wound up. Let's look now a little bit at the relationship between the file that you prepare and the print you get. Now this is a binary printing technology so we either have a dot or a pixel or we don't. The best way to do that is to make sure that the file is a dot file or a raster file and that the pixels that you want are all black. Then there's no issues with the printer in determining what it needs to do. Here we have a typical RFID antenna and with these the important area that needs the most control is here because that's where the chip gets attached. Now there's a gap between the left and the right on this and so here we have it enlarged. Um, we print either with 300 dpi or 600 dpi, that's pixels per inch. And in this instance here on the 300 you can see the stepwise nature of the file. Um, the gap in this case is two pixels. Two, uh, one pixel is about 85 micron dimension. The 600 dpi is half that or 43. So you can see the, the, um, the step structure and the, square and the very precise uh, dimensions in the file. Because we have thermal activity, we are trying to heat something, the transfer of the heat into the substrate, uh, through the ribbon and into the adhesive is not directly um, proportional to your file. At the edges, it just doesn't get as hot. So we have rounding off on the corners. Okay, so you can see all the corners are rounded off. The gap, the gap is still good. And that again is about 170 microns, which is really just right for the typical RFID um, chip. Over here, we've got the similar effect with the 600 dpi. Um, you can see that it's a finer, we don't have the stepping, the edges are straighter, but we still have the rounding off. 600 dpi is a little bit more difficult to manage, it tends to have more artifacts. Let's look now at the what happens when we try to make these narrow gaps. So um, this is at 300 dpi, here we have a single pixel gap and you'll notice down here that that single pixel is a little bit on the narrow side. Um, we go to two and three and they're very very close to what the file is. So these are factors that we take into consideration. Additionally it's rather hard to produce a one pixel gap because of the uh, change in temperature that's going on when you're printing and so they tend to close up. Thank you, Dean. For further information, samples, and videos, stay connected with our monthly newsletter and YouTube channel. Contact us directly via our website with any questions, www.metallograph.tech. Over there, you'll find information on applications and print systems, as well as our partners, printing and application hints, 
our free sample program and paper print program, as well as videos of printers in operation. Thank you for watching today. This is Dean Taylor and Ishia Lin signing off. Have a good day.